It is very clear at this moment that as much as senior Tories try to deny it, there are, shall we say, plans, plots, and schemes aplenty within the Tory party. And part of the reason why, and, and we've said this before, part of the reason why this does not want to go into effect, as you saw recently with Kimmy Badnock, I've had nothing to do with these plots against Sunak. These people telling me that I should take over? No, they're, they're not my friends. She says with a smile and, of course, a knife under the table, sharpening it herself, ready for the day when she can take out Sunak herself, probably. <laughs> um, yeah, the whole reason is, is because they know they know full well that if they change leader, they would have to go into a a general election. Not only that, Simon Clark, as we pointed out when he was coming out, oh, this could only take about a week. No, there's no way it couldn't. There is no way that a Tory leadership election could just be over and done with in a week unless the Tory MPs got together, as they did with Rishi Sunak, to decide this is who we're going to go with. Other than that, you've then got to include the Tory membership in this decision as well. And remember, they are not happy either that they did not get a say in, shall we say, the coronation of Rishi Sunak. So, if that was to happen again, and they were to be cut out of that decision again, um, there would be an almighty uproar. Not only that, when you look at the polls now, it is very clear that they are going to go into a awfully big defeat. A very big defeat. Even Davis, even David Davis, who we're going to get into in a moment, acknowledges this himself. Because he is desperately trying to de-escalate the Tory tensions in the party to try and say, oh, look, guys, you don't understand. We've got a general election to fight. We've all got to come together, sing Kumbaya, everything will be all right, everything will be okay. Except that message of, of, of you know, peace in our time, um, that's long gone. That is long, long gone. Bear in mind, David Davis himself bears responsibility himself for being one of, shall we say, the original rabble-rousers and chaos creators that led to this very situation. So he has absolutely nothing to say, reality, with his own hypocrisy when he acted in a time where he escalated tensions and eventually led to the unseating of Theresa May, which unleashed further Tory chaos. So, yeah, didn't see him saying, we all need to come together and, you know, sing come by our, there'll be peace in our times when Theresa May was in such, you know, having her own trials and tribulations, did we? But this is what uh, David Davis has done very recently in Conservative Home, trying to soothe the soothe the path, soothe the fears of many Tories that is about to be an, an eruption of you know <laughs> you know, tensions, but the real, the idea is, no, there already is, um, there are multiple people, different peoples in different throats so much, the Tory party is so divided so spread, so unable to actually even agree on basic stuff that Rishi Sunak himself cannot actually govern effectively. And the only way, the only way Rishi Sunak could probably get himself out of this mess is if he started to withdraw the whip from some people. But he, he didn't. Because if he started to do that, there would be a backlash. He would not be able to survive that backlash. He would have to call it a general election. And this is the point no Tory wants to go to a general election with the state in the polls are now. They are all hoping, as David Davis is about to show you, 
you know, fingers crossed and hoping that these poor lead narrows. But what have we seen constantly? They have been falling ever and ever and ever more in the polls. The point where you've even got Richard Trice, bear in mind, very optimistic, saying, oh, you don't understand. Soon we'll be ahead of the Tories in the polls. That's very optimistic, and to be honest, I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> I'll believe it when I actually see it in the poll numbers. But until then, that's a fancy that Richard Trice and Nigel Farage are trying to concoct and saying this as well. But uh, we're not going to go over F Davis's full um, argument here. I want to show you, of course, his main argument is that, look, the polls are going to narrow. Um, but then I also want to show you the comments, because the comments are just as fascinating. But before we do get to this over on Conservative Home, please do remember to click on the like, share, and subscribe button. Links down below, Patreon page, one of the nation link called Buy Me Coffee. Where you can well buy me coffee, YouTube thank you button, and of course the Patreon, uh, uh, the, 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 the the Pony Club, shall we say, not that, not the Patreon, we've already mentioned that. The Pony Club, as you can join down below. And of course, you can click the like and share and share button as well. That does help out the channel as well. So let's go over, see what David Davis, oh, there we go, let's go over to see what David Davis had to say. So this is his piece he wrote in uh, Conservative Home. So Labour's poll lead will narrow as the election draws near. My colleagues should take point and hold their nerve. Um, Here's the thing, and this is his point here. This is his big point. We'll see if we can't make this a bit bigger for you. But this is his point here, as you can see, that Whenever we got to a general election, um, bear in mind, we don't know when the general election is going to be. We could very well be, as, as Davis likes to point out, six months out here from a from a, from a general election right now. Well, we just don't realize it. <laughs> you know? um, but this was obviously very, very much require um, the Conservatives being able to make uh, you know somewhat of a comeback. And this is very, very much based on um, the 1992 um, su surprise, in many ways, shock um, John Major general election victory. Now, you'll also notice um, he does not include uh, the the 90s general election. So he suddenly, shall we say, stops at 97 and then jumps straight to 2010 and doesn't include the general elections between there. Hmm. <laughs> This is because uh, the poll lead did not narrow. That actually upsets his argument that, oh, the poll lead is going to narrow. You've also got to show that, you know, there's something to vote for. And this is what a lot of people are saying in the comments. And I, again, I want to point out, people who are, are signed up to this have to go through a whole system to, like, show that they're conservatives. Um, so it's... <laughs> It is one of these bizarre things where we get to read these comments. It's so interesting. Um, so um, this first one. So I'm afraid that uh, out of these first of all, I see nothing uh, in the government's performance that would excite me to vote for them. <laughs> so that's one. Uh, the next one. Divided parties don't win. Correct. Which was, again, sort of his two main arguments was the divided parties don't win. We need to come together. Um, David Davis didn't really do that under Theresa May, but there you go. Um, of course, he said, 2019 divided party. Uh, Boris uh, threw out the wets and won. Uh, in 2019, Labour had a divided party. Starmer purged it and he's now uh, and he's still purging the hard left and winning. Uh, do me a favour, Davis. Don't tell people to get on board and, uh, and have have the fight either the right of the party and win purge the wets or the wets purge the right and you become the limp dems <laughs> um which to be, to be honest bear in mind as we said this is why the 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 upcoming tory civil war whoever wins the next leadership election they're gonna get quite purgy they are gonna get very very purgy <laughs> especially if it's the right one on that uh, someone else said, ordinarily, I would agree, but uh, there are also good reasons why the polls won't narrow this time. One such is that voters are not alarmed by Keir Starmer and Rachel Reeves' labour in the way that they were by Jeremy Corbyn and Ed Miliband before him. Consequently, a vote for reform will not seem so risky as it was in 2019. So, yeah, that makes a good point on that. 
Uh, someone else, no good being a united party is its policies you have to have uh, have and legislation that don't deliver. It's like Labour saying that they should unite behind Corbyn in 2019. And, uh, and, of course, what is the offering at the next election? Because when the Rwanda bill fails, as it surely will, and we have tens of thousands coming across the channel in the summer, and inflation goes back up with massive minimum wages increase from April, then try and champion the 400k legal immigration and success that we've uh, had in the manifesto that would said less than 250k and why that was so high. I do not see what Sunak is going to offer anyone uh, out what they want. Most Tories want inheritance tax slash, but they have ditched that. You know, thanks, Davis. Just telling those who are pointing this out, you are driving us over a cliff edge just to shut up. It is a, called a battle for ideas and conservative values, and your lot clearly have nothing to offer that the public want other than effect, ineffective legislation that doesn't do the job more than hot air and a barrage balloon. <laughs> Again, you can tell, as we've said, this was an attempt to de-escalate tensions. This has clearly not de-escalated. Because you can still see Tory voters are not happy. And even some saying, why am I going to go out and vote for you? Which, again, is more good for us. <laughs> um, someone else. I don't see a Tory win this year, but I also think that David does raise a valid point, if only in terms of damage lim limitation. His analysis of Tory voters uh, narrowing the gap in the election is accurate, Although, as I pointed out as well, he does admit 2001 and 2005. Maybe they don't support his theory as much. And again, when you look it up, surprisingly, they don't. Um, someone else is called clutching at straws. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I needs to say, there have not been many people praising Davis coming out for saying this. Um it's also very rich coming from someone like David Davis saying that, oh, you need to rally behind uh, a leader. You need to get behind them because he did not do this for Theresa May. He did absolutely not do this for Theresa May. Not only did he resign, of course, as Brexit minister, but he also then actively went and pursued, you know, policies and did stuff behind Theresa May's back on the backbenchers that would eventually get her ousted and unleash more of this full you know, chaos. So, again, it's very, very rich coming from Davis that we have to all get together and, you know, sing Kumbaya or else we're doomed, guys. <laughs> Ken, just look at what David Davis was doing during, uh, you know, 2017 to 2018. Even 2019, to some extent, he wasn't. He wasn't. Should we say exactly the most loyal to party leadership back then? Which is again kind of hilarious on so many fundamental levels. Um, but there you go. So, um, so yeah, let me know what you think to that. But as always, thank you very much for watching, and of course, as always, we'll see you all next time.